Hey guys, this video is going to be all about some tips and tricks to achieve beautiful skin from within. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tips out there, so I just decided to put together a very detailed list on what I do to achieve like a healthy appearance from the outside or from the inside to go like, you know, from within to the out. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Like for instance, I'm a vegetarian who doesn't eat vegetables. I absolutely hate them. Like I think vegetables are disgusting and I will not touch one. And I obviously don't eat meat because I'm a vegetarian. So I am like a carb junkie. It's crazy, but there are just so many alternatives and ways to achieve a healthy look from within where you don't need to just have this really strict crazy diet. So I'm going to share with you guys what I do and everything that works for me and I will get right to it. And for me, the number one most important hands down is hydration. You need to drink your water, people. If you have a hard time drinking water, keep a big water jug on hand. That's what I do. That way it's just always with me and then I'm always able to just grab it and sip it throughout the day. If you don't really like water, find something that's natural to flavor it with, whether it be like lemon that you put into it. There are so many options aside from things like Crystal Light that are like really natural. You can reach for tea and I will explain some really awesome benefits to green tea in a minute. I mean, you can get foods that are naturally hydrating like watermelon or cucumber. Just find a way to get your water intake. Water will help clear toxins that cause inflammation and blemishes. It assists in transporting nutrients and oxygen to skin cells, and it prevents dehydration, which can cause premature aging, and nobody wants that. It can even make skin appear fuller, since the hyaluronic acid that naturally exists in the skin will pull in the water and hold it uh, for a wrinkle plumping effect. So drinking the three and a half to five liters of water a day will be dependent on how active you are as a person, what kind of climate you live in. If it's hot, you're going to want to obviously drink more. If you sweat a lot, if you like work out really intensely. So there's a big range, but three and a half to five liters is like a really good estimate for what you should be drinking. I drink five liters absolutely like and my husband does too. We are water fiends like we go through one of those big culligans every day almost like it's bad. So just get your water intake in and then you're going to notice such a difference and it's going to benefit your hair, your skin, your nails and your overall health. And as you know, my dogs are in here because they are talking already. I also just realized that I didn't mention I am going to be posting all of this in a blog and I will link the blog below so that way you guys have it in like a written form as well. I just know that sometimes it's better to hear somebody or just hit play while you're like cleaning the house, you're putting on your makeup or doing whatever so you can like hear it being read to you almost rather than having to sit there and read through like three pages of documents. So I'm going to read it to you that way if you want to be doing something else, you can at least be doing something else. And I also did a complete skincare video about a month and a half ago on my skincare routine and I will link that video below for you too. So the next thing is investing in a really high quality multivitamin. I mean, unless you're somebody who really truly hits every mark for how many vegetables, fruits, proteins, the fatty acids or fatty oils and everything like that in a day if you're not getting everything that you're supposed to take a really high quality multivitamin. I take one that is by I think it's Trace Minerals and it is like a complete foods multi I believe. I'll link that below for you too. But you take two pills a day and it has like all these servings of vegetables, fruits, like vegetables, from the sea, I mean, right down to things like alfalfa. It is just, it is unbelievable what's included in it. And then I take an omega supplement as well. But healthy glow starts from within. So you want to take your multivitamin and make sure it has vitamin C and E in it if you're trying to combat fine lines and wrinkles. And for smooth skin, you want to have fatty acids. Romeo. 
he's not being very nice because Dumbo wants to come sit on mom's lap too. You want to make sure that you're having like antioxidants in your multivitamins because those are like the little warriors that are going to fight off any kind of like bad things that cause premature aging. Uh, vitamin C rich foods help mop up the free radicals that cause wrinkles and sagging and it helps remove the DNA damage that they form. And then you also get like wound healing benefits, immune system support. It is just all around a really great thing to be taking in. And then vitamin C, you can put like directly onto your skin. I use vitamin C serum. So if you're putting it right onto your skin, your body can just like directly absorb it and you can get a really high potency of it. Berries. Berries are packed. <laughs> My dogs are playing. Berries are packed with antioxidants, antioxidants, which help neutralize free radicals, and they also help the body manufacture collagen, leaving your skin smooth and firm. Green tea, like I mentioned, is full of antioxidants, and those are really important in age preventatives. So try to get your green tea in. Omegas help increase skin elasticity, it lowers inflammation, and it puts the brakes on breakouts. A high quality oils and fatty acids aid in skin repair and rejuvenation, which helps slow down the process of skin sagging, fine lines, and having blotchy skin. So if you want to have these rewards, like you know, preventing wrinkles and smooth skin and all that, you want to take your omegas daily. I don't eat fish as a vegetarian, but if you take your omegas or you're getting your fatty oils in by like healthy, you know, coconut oil, extra virgin olive oil, avocados, anything like that, it is so great for you. So don't be scared of like the good fats because it is so good for your skin. So figure out a way to get that in one way or another because like with me, I'm okay to swallow fish oil. I just can't handle like chewing on fish. Fish, that grosses me out but I'll just like take it in between food so I'm, I'll eat half my meal and then I'll swallow the omega and then a little fish oil and then I'll finish eating so I don't feel like it's like fish sitting in my stomach because that's just so gross but um, get your omegas in it'll make a huge difference and then protein same thing I don't eat any kind of meat but I am not a vegan, so I do have dairy. I do protein powders, protein bars, obviously whey, different things like that. But protein plays a vital role in the production of collagen and elastin, and it will really help feed your complexion by eating things like meat, fish, uh, dairy, eggs, soy, lentils, beans, anything like that. So just try to get your protein in and you're going to have all around benefits for your skin, your hair, and your nails. Exercise. Now I know so many people hate exercising, so many people love it, other people just have a middle ground for it, but exercising, I mean aside from all of the great benefits for your heart and your body and your health, it is really great for your skin because it gets the blood flowing, it brings oxygen to the skin, and it's just, it will give you like this healthy glow by exercising because of the blood flow. And then while working out because it's working out so you're supposed to be working hard that means you're supposed to be sweating when you're sweating you're sweating out toxins and that's removing dead skin cells as well so that way new ones can be generated so with a regular exercise you can see an increase in uh, sorry without regular exercise you would see an increase in things like age spots but with regular exercise because all of that oxygen is getting pumped to your skin and you have the blood flow and new skin cells are being generated you can actually have a decrease in age spots so that is just another reason to go hit the gym and sweat it out I mean there you just you should be exercising anyway but go work out uh, but if you are somebody who, do, who does your hair and then you work out like later on in the day, make sure that you're wearing like a sweatband or something like that because you don't want any kind of hairspray or hair products sweating into your face because your pores are open when you're working out that hard and you don't want them getting clogged with whatever hair products or makeup you have on your face. So
So just like clean off your face before you work out and put a sweatband on so that way everything that's coming off isn't like getting mixed back into your skin because that's just going to be counterproductive on other parts like causing breakouts and uneven skin tone and texture. Alright, I know I've said this so many times, but wear your SPF. Put your SPF on your hair, put your SPF on your face, your body, and your lips. You want to prevent skin damage, premature aging, sunspots, wrinkles. Just put on the SPF, find one that is easy to apply that you'll just put on quickly and be done with it. You want to protect your skin from both all of that premature aging and dryness. And then if you wear sunglasses, I mean, it's something that is so easily overlooked, but put on sunglasses because when you go outside and it's bright out and you don't put sunglasses on, you end up squinting. And when you squint, you're gonna cause so many wrinkles and fine lines all around your eyes. And your eyes are such a delicate area. You don't want to squint. Like I even keep sunglasses at the door. So every time I take my dogs out, I throw sunglasses on because it's just, it is unbelievable believable how many times in a day if you really start paying attention that you find yourself squinting and over the years that is really going to take a toll on your eyes because this skin around it is just such a delicate area so just on top of SPF wear your sunglasses it's gonna go a really long way and then when you're moisturizing moisturize your skin and your lips because your lips are going to get fine lines over the years too and lips are something that gets overlooked so when you're moisturizing you need to find a balance because moisturizing after washing your face is really important for hydration and then to put the benefits of whatever creams you've invested in to full use because that's when your skin is going to absorb it the, like the most uh, but you don't want to over moisturize either because that can cause breakouts and then you can even get like those little little white bumps on your skin because your pores can become clogged with moisturizing so it's not pimples. I don't know if you say milia, milia, I'm not really sure how you pronounce it but you, it's like these little little white spots and that's just from over moisturizing so you need to find a balance for what your skin needs when it comes to moisturizing and you don't want like your that moisture getting trapped underneath dead skin cells so finding that balance is really important and then that brings me to the next step which is exfoliating because exfoliating will help get rid of all of those skin dead skin cells and it will help get new ones like rejuvenating and growing and coming in so exfoliating goes hand in hand with moisturizing and that's just really important for your skin and it will give smoothness smoothness it will improve your skin tone and it's going to give you fewer wrinkles over time. Not smoking. I know I don't want to like preach to you guys, but seriously, smoking causes so many wrinkles. I smoked for one year, like 14 years ago, and I regret it so much. I can't even tell you. Smoking will give like those wrinkles that appear all around your lips, like little, little, little lines that go all around, and it will really start emphasizing wrinkles around your eyes and just your whole face. As you start aging, you're gonna look more weathered, the same way like when you over tan, you're gonna look more weathered. Smoking does the same thing, and sec inhaling secondhand smoke is also just not as deadly but I mean just as deadly there are so many bad things for your health when it comes to smoking but even when it comes to like appearance it's going to speed up the aging process and it's going to start your skin and like have it start sagging sooner than it normally would so just don't smoke and stay away from smoking it is just bad for you on all ends and I know you've heard it so many times but it really is so that's my two cents and I am an ex-smoker so I feel like I can give my but a little bit more because I so regret it. I did it when I was like 16 for a year and I wish I could take that back, but I just can't. So moving on. Okay guys, sleep and managing stress. I so suck at both. I am an insomniac. Like 
is so bad, like an hour or two a night if I'm lucky and then I'm on so many medications to try to help put me to sleep. My sleeping is really bad. I mean, in an ideal world, if you guys can get eight hours in, get eight hours in, but if you can't, just sleep as much as you can. If it means turning the TV off and catching up on your show the next day, do it. The TV show is not going anywhere. So go to bed and sleep. It's just, that is so important. And managing stress too. I don't manage stress well at all. And I don't like so much break out from stress, but I just like crumble from the inside and I'm a disaster and a head case. Like I show it in other ways, but you can show it really badly in skin and like really bad dark circles and getting breakouts and everything else. So just try to manage your stress and try to get as much sleep as possible. Uh, skin cells do a lot actually the most of their rejuvenating in the body and everything while you sleep that goes for muscle repair anything while you're sleeping it's when your body does all of its repairing so you want your adequate rest or you're going to suffer the body depends on sleep for like literally everything it does and when skin cells don't turn over quickly enough the skin looks dull and lifeless so we do too and you need to remove your makeup before you go to sleep. Now, when I was a teenager and I would do sleepovers at friends' houses, I would actually like reapply my makeup before bedtime. I was so insecure. I didn't want anybody seeing me without makeup. I, I literally would redo eyeliner, mascara, foundation, and everything. I was like a really insecure teenager. And that really takes a toll. Since about 17, 18, I have not slept with makeup on once. I have definitely had my fair share of some partying. And even when I was like throwing up from drinking too much at like three, four in the morning, I would get my face to a sink, wash off my makeup and then throw up again because I know that it matters that much. So it did not matter how much I had to drink, which mind you, I really only ever partied a couple times a year. Just side note, I was never a big partier. But the, when I did and I needed to like just go to sleep, I still didn't skip the step of washing my face. So get the makeup off, that is so important. And even things like sleeping um, positions and your sheets make a huge difference. If you can avoid sleeping on your face, that is the best thing you can do. It is something that I struggle with. I am a side sleeper and I cannot break this habit. And if you sleep on your face, you're always like pulling your skin or if you're sleeping like right on your face too, but side sleeping is gonna pull your skin and it's going to make it sag over time. So if you can sleep on your back and your face up, that is the most ideal way to do it but I already have so many sleeping problems that I can't be uncomfortable too. But if you're somebody who can, then sleep on your back because that's going to just go so far as you age. And then get silk or satin pillowcases. That will help your skin and your hair because then everything just like sliding on the sheets rather than cotton where it's like shaping. So silk and satin sheets really go a long way too. And you want to make sure you change your bed sheets at least every two weeks. I change mine once a week. Don't go more than two weeks because as you are sleeping, your dead skin cells start accumulating on it. You get bacteria and you get toxins and then that's going to keep transferring back onto your clean skin and it's just that you're just going to be building up. So you want to refresh your, your sheets so that way your skin is always on clean sheets. And now my little Louie, Louie Lou has come into the camera because he wants his dinner. Yeah, and he's mad that mommy's filming instead. <laughs> Cooler showers. This is also something that I am working on. I love really hot showers. It feels so wonderful on my neck and my muscles. But when it comes time to washing my face, I do cool it down because hot showers are bad for your face. So if you can tone down the heat a little bit, that's going to go a really long way. Um, they, it can strip away like your outermost layers of your skin and your natural oils when you have it cranked up too much. So it just, it feels great, but your skin's going to end up more dry and scaly than it needs to. So just try to do lukewarm water and I mean, you're going to win overall. Just if you can do that, do that. 
Now, when it comes to wanting to de <laughs> when it comes to wanting to depuff your eyes, so many of us want to go for eye gels, like different eye creams and eye gels that help depuff. That's actually like taking the moisture, the water out of the eyes and dehydrating it and causing wrinkles. So when you use things like that to, to get rid of puffiness, you're actually giving yourself wrinkles. You want to use something cold instead, like grabbing a cold spoon, ice cubes, anything cold for compress to put on your eyes is for depuffing rather than gels. So if you can use that or something natural, like soaking green tea bags and putting those on your eyes or using cucumbers and putting that on your eyes, anything like that is not going to make the water get sucked out from your skin and that's not going to like cause any kind of wrinkles and dryness over time. So leave the, the gels and all of that for special occasions, but day-to-day -day faces, just get out of the habit of using them. The coldness actually restricts the blood vessels and that's going to reduce the swelling and puffiness. So it's a natural way and if you're just freezing a spoon it's not even going to cost you any money. So it's also something that's going to save you money and it's going to save your skin and save wrinkles and premature aging and all that jazz. Keep your hands off your face. Touching your face like transfers bacteria. It will put bad oils from your hands onto your face that's going to lead, lead to clogging your pores, breakouts, and it's just keep your hands off your face as much as you can. And when it comes to pimples, if you absolutely have to squeeze a pimple, wait for there to be a white head. You don't want to squeeze until there's a white head. Then once there is, you take a warm compress, like just take a, even a face towel, soak it under hot water, and then put the warm compress right on the pimple. And then you can do that a couple of times. <laughs> my dog's up on my counter not turn things over. But do that a few times with the hot compress. And then once that's become all like warm and ready to go, you take two Q-tips. And with the Q-tips, you squeeze it. So you don't use your fingers because when you have fingers or nails, you can break the skin, you can damage the skin, and you can have a permanent scar from it. So the warmth is going to help make, make it more easy to pop, and then using the Q-tips, it's going to just like boop, open up for you, and you're not going to break your skin and damage your skin. You want to clean your makeup brushes at least once a month because that's going to get rid of bacteria and decrease your chances for breakouts. Unfortunately, cutting down on alcohol will help with your skin. It will go a really long way. Alcohol zaps the body of vitamin A, which is an important antioxidant that's necessary for repairing skin tissue. When vitamin A levels drop below normal, your skin will look dry and flaky, and then that leads to wrinkles. But one glass of red wine every day is good for you because that is actually loaded with antioxidants and quercetin. So try to lower your liquor and your beer, but opt for a glass of red wine and that can go a long way. And while we're on the like guilty pleasures topic, sex. I know, but sex boosts collagen. So believe it or not, it it's going to you know, be great all around for everything, but when you boost your collagen production, that helps keep pigmentation issues and skin sagging away. So get to the bedroom or wherever you like to, you know, get down and dirty. De-stress your skin. I mean, the last topic is going to help de-stress, but with de-stressing your skin, I mean, try to Go makeup free as much as possible. If you're just running to the grocery store, I mean, don't throw makeup on. It's a habit that I've had to break, but I have broken it. If you're just running out for like 30 minutes, you don't need to throw makeup on. And if you really can't get out of that habit, when you come home and you're done for the day, at least get your makeup off your face as soon as possible. Don't linger around the house because, you know, you're being lazy and you don't want to go wash it off and, oh, I'll do it later later. I mean, we've all been there. I've been there. You're tired. You just want to go sit down, put the TV on, chill, grab your glass of wine, whatever it is. I get it. I totally do. But just get your makeup off immediately when you get home. Make it part of your routine. It's part of mine. I come
come home, I take my clothes off, I put my pajamas on, I wash my face, and then I'm done. I, they're, they're cheering me on because they agree. <laughs> they just know that that leads to cuddles. But seriously, if you can de-stress your skin, de-stress it by like keeping the makeup off and getting it off as soon as possible. And by washing your face, this is kind of like the last main tip, you don't want to overwash your face because that will remove natural oils and that can cause your face to like overproduce oil. Because when you're stripping away oils way too often or overusing like blotting papers because you're too oily, your skin is going to produce more oil. And the same goes with hair. If you're overwashing your hair, your hair is actually going to become more oily and more greasy. So in the beginning, it's always more difficult because with hair washing too, you don't want to wash it more than twice a week. And you're always going to be more greasy at first, but eventually you're going to adapt. And with face washing, there's no no need to wash your face more than twice a day, morning and night. And if you're somebody who doesn't even really need to, then just rinse your face with cold water in the morning and save the cleansing for the nighttime before you go to bed. So just try to balance that out. Don't wash your face more than twice a day. Just you don't want to have your face producing more oil than it needs to. And the last tip is smile. Honestly, smiling just goes such a long way. I mean, I know we're all gonna get laugh lines and it leads to some more wrinkles. And if you ask like Kim Kardashian, she's gonna say she doesn't smile because she doesn't want wrinkles. She just wants like a tight face. But at the end of the day, smiling goes so far. It's going to help other people. If you smile at others, you have no idea what they're going through. So it's going to pick up other people by smiling at them, saying hi. You're going to actually feel better by smiling and that is just going to give you like this overall radiance and happiness and I mean happiness is everything so just smile more often and be happy. Those are all of my tips. I know this was a longer video, but I wanted to make sure that I shared all of my goodies with you because this is everything that I do and a couple of things that I'm still working on and trying to do because I know how helpful it is. But that does it for this video. So until next time, good night, good morning, wherever you are. I love you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.